It is a special day in snowy stores as we welcome you to UConn Women's Basketball on SNY. Brought to you by Connecticut Lighting Centers and Restoration Lighting Gallery. So much more than just a lighting store. Welcome courtside here at Gamble Pavilion alongside Megan Como. I am Eric Freed. Three UConn greats being honored here today. Of course, Rebecca Lobo at halftime. And yes, the seniors here today. You just saw the senior day ceremony. Nafisa Collier, Katie Lou Samuelson among the greats in UConn history. Let's start with Katie Lou Samuelson. Came here as an elite shooter. She's still an elite shooter, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Well, it's impressive to me how hard Katie Lou has worked over the last four years to diversify her game. Yes, she's an outstanding three-point shooter. What a sweet stroke, right? And, but she now works, she moves well without the basketball, finds open spots on the floor for the open shot, but uses her teammates so well, sets up the defense. Irwin setting a terrific screen. She reads the defense. But to me, what separates her from her freshman year, the way she works in the lane, she's gotten stronger. She can finish while getting fouled. She couldn't do that as a freshman. Her defense, her, particularly her team defense, is outstanding, runs the floor well, gets herself into the lane, and can finish there on the break. Her numbers are incredible over the course of this career. But what impresses me the most is the way she has worked came in as that great shooter, but is now a great, complete player. Speaking of complete players, how about the incredible numbers put up by Nafisa Collier, the fifth member of the 2,000 point, 1,000 rebound club. Where does she stand in UConn history? But maybe more importantly, where would this year's team be without her? Well, I mean, yes, Gino talks about her being, yeah, player of the year candidate. Well, think about what she means to this team. Without Nafisa Collier on this team, they're not even in consideration in the national championship talk she's that she's that good she's that dominant she's efficient she's consistent she will be one of the greats in history for uconn but i've been i've been so impressed by the way she finishes and never stops moving so as i said a special day four years of sweat and tears and for these two all the time smiles two great friends two great players two of the greats in uconn history take the floor ed gamble as uconn takes on houston next on sny
teammates in UConn history. Honored here today, you can see Katie Lou Samuelson and Afisa Collier, over 4,400 points. The tandem of Brianna Stewart and Mariah Jefferson in second place. That just shows you that they have been contributing, Katie Lou and Nafisa, consistently at a high level for four years for the University of Connecticut. The only snag, literally, of <laughs> the pregame ceremony was trying to unveil the two newest members of Huskies of Honor. Just a little too secure. And you can see Gino right there. Every year this happens. <laughs> he almost pulled down the pieces number. And I think she was concerned about the people up in that section. A couple of moments ago, they got out the biggest ladder in the building. They unveiled the pieces number. And the pizza was watching. And she got a second celebration <laughs> here today. <laughs> so these two who play at a high level, very intense players, you have seen through the four years. They like to laugh a little bit too, and that was worth a good laugh. So good job by everybody to get those numbers undone here as we take a look at the starting. Lineups presented by Subaru. Houston comes in, 15 wins on the season, 9-5 and five in the conference. That's fourth in the American. They're coming off a loss to USF last time out. Angela Harris, Octavia Barnes, Dorian Branch, their top three active scores there, playing without Jasmine Harris, serving a season-long suspension. She did play part of that first UConn game. Gino Oriyama is back on the bench after missing the trip to Tulsa and Wichita State with the stomach virus. And his starting five, very familiar. And there's no needing to start a senior here on Senior Day because these seniors have not missed a start. Katie Lou Samuelson out there with the Fisa Collier. The freshman, Kristen Williams, junior, Crystal Dangerfield, and sophomore, Megan Walker. Sellout crowd here at Gamble. A couple of inches of snow throughout the state of Connecticut. Slowed things down, but it uh, looks like just about everybody's in their seats as we get ready for UConn and Houston, their second meeting this season. UConn won January 6th, 81-61 was the final. Angela Lewis, Ed Sedlaski, Luis Gonzalez, our officiating crew. And we're underway here at Gamble. And now after all the emotion, they have to play a game. We've seen through the years, sometimes that is a little bit of a challenge for UConn after the long pregame ceremony. To dial up that intensity. Shot clock at seven. Williams there defensively. Shot clock at four. Shot clock down to two, and a three on the way is off the mark. And it's grabbed by Nafisa Collier. Katie Wu got crushed by a screen. She almost looked woozy. Danger field through the hands of Megan Walker. Three is good from Octavia Barnes, one of the big stories in the conference this year. She was 0 for 4 all of last year from outside the three-point line. This year, she's leading the conference at three-point shooting at 49%. Collier to Megan Walker. Stifling defense by Houston. Good feed, danger field, and Collier gets the first points. And that's what you got to do. You got to dribble, penetrate, make the defense, make a mistake, which is what happened. Barnes with the spin. A little too strong. Houston getting on the glass here in the early going and the second chance for the Cougars. They are not afraid to shoot threes. They shoot a lot of threes. They lead the conference in threes attempted at 24 a game. Collier's got the first four for UConn. Angela Harris. Another three-pointer for Houston. Another offensive rebound for the Cougars. Another three-pointer for Houston, and they count another basket for Barnes. Well, Barnes took 42,000 threes this summer. That will certainly improve your numbers, won't it? <laughs> Samuelson moves for Collier. Sets a screen for Williams. Williams will head to the free throw line. 
Kalia runs the floor, always has her hands up, ready, calling for the ball. She does so much work before she catches the ball. And I tell you, Houston shooting the ball well early. Nafisa's folks up from Missouri. Sarah Gamal, you saw in the pregame ceremony, brother here as well, as Nafisa was all smiles. She said she would not cry. No, no. She was right. And I love how all the parents have gotten out of their the clothes that they wore out. Now they're wearing sweats. <laughs> yeah, well, be comfortable. This is a game. Yep, got to be ready. John, so, yeah, John Samuelson joked. He's like, I got to put a blazer on? Come on. <laughs> One of two for Williams. Sargino Oriema bringing... Kristen's four teammates over to talk to him. Already, UConn's given up three offensive rebounds here in the first couple of minutes to Houston. And another three for Octavia Barnes. How many threes did she make? 42,000. They split it up over 12 and a half weeks. Well, she has made three in four attempts here in the first three minutes against the second-ranked Huskies. Dangerfield, Samuelson, open look. Rebound for Houston. Saritha Hawkins, senior from Oklahoma. Nine conference wins for the second year in a row for Rod Huey's team. And they love the three, and they're getting open looks for three. And Dorian Branch with that arm up in the air. She came down the floor. Great start for Houston here on top of UConn by seven. Well, Rod Huey's a great coach, and he has them prepared. <laughs> All three field goals for UConn from Nafisa Collier. Another open look for three. Houston's getting what they want from outside the three-point line. You know it's coming with Houston. As I mentioned, they lead the conference in threes attempted per game. They attempted 29 in the loss to USF. They'll shoot tons of threes. UConn unable to counter from outside the three-point line so far. Now Branch beating Dangerfield down the court. Well, I have to ask, Megan, is this senior day ceremony hangover for UConn? I we think have it's, seen it It's a little, Yeah, we've seen it before. And, you know, Houston's a better team than their record. It's pass. Before the shot, Samuelson was hit. I mean, you got to know where the, they want to shoot threes. They've already knocked down several. And then you know, Gina's question is, how could you be that wide open? Nice job getting the ball up the floor in a hurry. Another foul on Houston as Sanderson was ready to trigger an inbound. Early substitution is Olivia Nelson to Dota is in the game for Kristen Williams. You can see she's gone to the bench. It's like with a bloody nose. That's always fun. That's always fun. Also, the Dota's played very well over these last couple of weeks. Dangerfield, a little off balance for two. Terrific back cut. Nice job by UConn offensively to read the defense. Fade away, won't go down for Barnes, and Walker, last touch by Houston, it'll be Connecticut ball. Nice hustle there by Megan Walker. To try to track that down, falling out of bounds, and knock it off of Houston. UConn a minus three in rebounding margin here in the opening minutes of the regular season finale at Gamble. Walker will turn and score. Megan Walker really struggled against Wichita after a great game against Tulsa when she had 21 and 10. And Wichita just two points, five rebounds, was 0 for 4 from the field. Just didn't seem to be very involved in that game. That's the consistency struggle that some of these players get into. You have to be able to come in night in and night out. Samuelson got a hand on the rebound. She's taking a couple of whacks here in the early going. Pointed out before, it hit hard on the screen. Danger field, spins it in for two. Makes a difference when Dangerfield can dribble, penetrate, and make things happen, whether for herself or for her teammates. 
Finley off the mark, rebound for Collier. Up ahead to Samuelson. Samuelson, great finish for her first points. Hard to believe they didn't call a foul there. The refs have been letting these guys play, which I prefer. Inside of four minutes to go in the first quarter. Another open three for Houston. This won't go down, and Collier is fouled. That'll get us to our first media timeout. Well, an 8 nothing run should take the edge off of this conversation in the huddle from Gino Oriyama. It was all Houston in the first few minutes. UConn battling back down two in the first. Sponsor of UConn Athletics by People's United Bank. Let us be your financial point guard. People's United Bank member FDIC. By Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. By the Connecticut State Farm agents of the game. Anthony Raji and stores. Matthew Bubb and Bristol. Speak with them today. And by Nissan. Proud partner of the UConn Huskies. Go Huskies. UConn was down by 10. They're now down by 2. Let's check in with Justine Ward, whose report today is brought to you by Connecticut Lighting Centers. Eric, we have a big name in the building. Kobe Bryant is here today for this game, and he's been mentoring Katie Lou Samuelson, who told me they watched film together this summer, and Kobe gave her a whole new perspective on watching film. He pays attention to so many little details. You can't just watch yourself. You have to watch the sidelines. You have to watch the play. You have to watch how people are reacting to the play, and they've texted through Throughout the course of the season, he gave her some great advice after the Baylor game. In that loss, he said, take it as a learning lesson. Well, I, I do see, too, Kobe wearing the proper colors. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the timeout, good ball movement to get Collier inside for an easy two. Eight points for Nafisa. Imagine how different this team would be. You got a high post pass like that from the freshman coming in. I love the announcement of Dota. So the Dota, I think, got a hand in there, and a foul is called. You know, you got Nelson Adota who gets the ball at the high post. How she'll change things for this team to be able to pass the ball like that. I mean, she just keeps getting better and better and better. Well, that was an interesting sequence right there because Gina Oriema over the last couple of weeks has praised Megan Walker's passing ability, how she's improved. Katie Lou Samuelson is one of the team's best passers. It's been that way for a couple of years. And then Nelson Adota had the final pass there. So everybody having a hand in there. And it's Tatiana Hill at the free throw line. Off the bench, freshman from Spring, Texas. Picked up one Rookie of the Week award in the American this year, averaging five points a game. 
That ended a 10-0 run for UConn. Samuelson open three. Nice offense, really good spacing by UConn. Last time UConn was down by 10 was in the first half against South Carolina at the XL Center. Of course, they came back with 97 points on the board to win that game. Look at Collier extending the defense. I think part of the message in that last huddle was, uh, let's get out to the three-point line. I think so. <laughs> nice hustle by Collier. Gino's been really animated over on that bench, too. Well, he's been cooped up at home for I the last know. couple of days. You know, part of me thought that he wasn't going to come back today because he was so impressed by the work we did that he thought that was just so much more comfortable. But sure. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Kathy was happy to get him out of the family room and back on the bench. Chris Daly, of course, took over the two games that Gino missed in Tulsa and Wichita State. Uh, and I hate to break it to CD, but those two wins go on Gino's all-time record. <laughs> well, she's gonna, she'll keep that nine and zero record. At least she'll talk about it. Good defense by Dangerfield. Nice switch. Through the hands of Hill. See Kristen Williams back into the game after getting the nose checked out. And a foul is called. Better from UConn. Different intensity. Yes. I think they came out, whether it's the emotional hangover from senior day or just, you know, maybe didn't come out with the same focus because it's used it. But really good footwork. Really active. Everyone knows where the ball is. Hands are up. It's not easy to, to have the senior day stuff and then come out and play, but you got to focus. Talia at the free throw line, 69% on the season, 61% from the field this season. That number has gone up. Samuelson getting on the glass and showing a trip for the free throw line. Let's go back to what Meg talked about and how Katie Lou Samuelson, who came to Connecticut, her role her freshman year was to knock down corner threes. When you look at that team with Brianna Stewart dominating that squad, Katie Lou found that niche. Right away the next year, she had to step into a bigger role. And we've just seen in two sequences how moving her feet and being good defensively, but also getting on the board. Remember, Gino used to pick on her all the time about never getting an offensive rebound or a rebound for that matter, but I think that was to your point about how she's improved. Well, and the, 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 the physical way that she plays now, she didn't like to get bumped and hit, and we've seen her over the course of the last four years just get hit so hard. Now there, she got scored on, but that was an outstanding move. Kristen Williams with the catch, couldn't finish it. Megan Walker looking for the rebound, can't get it. Julia Blackshell Fair is the one who scored that last trip. Now in transition, Houston with the quick three. And saved by Hawkins. Houston plays hard, they attack, they crash the boards. Samuelson knocked it out of play. Better effort, better intensity for Houston so far. <laughs> Samuelson gave the ref a look like, come on, that was off her. <laughs> UConn men are here in stores tomorrow at noon to take on USF. The Huskies will welcome back Ray Allen and his teammates as Ray's number 34 is retired here at Gamble Pavilion. Tickets are available at UConnTickets.com. No tickets available today. Sell out here at Gamble to see Senior Day and also to pay tribute to Rebecca Lobo. That's coming up at halftime. We'll have it for you in its entirety. They are relentless on the boards. They're good job on the boards and making the most of it. Dorian Branch now with seven points. They were a minus one coming into this game and rebounding margin this year. Had a slight edge on the boards here today against Connecticut. Final minute, first quarter. Samuelson on the post up. Kristen Williams, good acceleration, just couldn't get the layup. That was a good take. Just couldn't get it to drop. Samuelson had three red jerseys on her. They, they reverse it. A nice penetration. Just couldn't get it to drop. <laughs> you see her reaction. She 
communicating better on the screens. UConn is defensively. Michaela Coombs into the game doing what she's done over the last couple of weeks, getting a hand in on a pass. And disrupting that yeah, Houston offense. She, the ball hit her in the back of the head. She That's didn't okay. see it coming, but Counts. she disrupted the play, almost forced it back. A backcourt violation. But made but came in the game to your point, came in, made something happen. Collier. That's a foul called on the piece of Collier. I'd like to see that. I don't agree with that call. But I have been wrong before. Let's see. She should have taken her there and not let for her wait for her to stand up. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think it was incidental. Was it just the stuff that they're letting go these days? Good point. Or in this game, as you pointed out before. Yeah. I mean, a little bit of acting defensively, but give her credit. She sold it. Angela. Harris, the fadeaway is off the mark, and Houston will have a one-point lead as we head to quarter number two. See, Justine Ward is sitting next to Kobe Bryant. Conversation coming up next, though. So you can check out the selfie first. Back in a moment. TV. UConn down by one at the end of one quarter, 23-22. Here is Justine Ward with Kobe Bryant. Thank you, Eric, here with Kobe and his daughter. And Kobe, you told me UConn is your daughter's team. What about the program attracted your daughter to become a fan? Well, I think the players, first and foremost, and, you know, the camaraderie that they have with each other is something that she kind of gravitated to. And then Gino and CD and their leadership and the culture of the program and you know, all the way on down to Rebecca and Diana and Sue. So um, she loves the program. A lot of great names on that list. What do you enjoy about watching them play? Well, the discipline that they play with. You know, they play a game that's, uh, that's played together. You know, individually they all have brilliant things that they do. But they sacrifice those individual brilliance things, uh, brilliance for uh, a team effort. How they move the ball, how they move off the ball, how they screen for each other, defensively, how they scheme well together. I mean, those are things that's a lost art. And to be honest with you, it's a lost art in the NBA game. You talked a lot about the dedication. You've had some success. This program is successful. What goes into being successful, both as an individual and as a team? You know what? It's just consistency. Right, it's just good old-fashioned, do the work every single day. 
Days you don't feel like doing it, you show up and you do it. And when you do that every day for a long period of time, you wind up having a, a success that goes on for, you know, quite a few years. And Kobe, we know you won an Academy Award in 2018. What have you been up to these days? Well, you know, we have a, a, a fantasy novel coming out, March 19th, actually, that's based around basketball and magic, and uh, it's called the Roller B. Wizard Series. So that, that's coming out this month. How much do you miss playing? You know, it's funny. I, I, I don't, it, which is weird. Like, if you would have asked me that years ago, I would have said that's impossible to have that feeling, but I don't. You know, I watch the game through my daughter's eyes. I, you know, see her play every single day, and, uh, you know, I'm busy building a studio, so I'm happy. How much does it mean to you that your daughter loves the game that you love? No, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. When she started out playing soccer, which I love, when she came to me about a year and a half ago and said, can you teach me the game? I said, sure. We started working a little bit, and next thing you know, it became a, it became a true passion of hers. So it's, uh, it's wonderful. Can she beat you? Second person, <laughs> she wants to know if you can beat me yet. <laughs> oh, she's confident, like her dad. Well, Kobe, we appreciate the time and hope you enjoy the game today and your time in stores. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. You know, Kobe's been a big supporter of women's basketball. UConn, his relationship with Gina goes back to the 2012 Olympics. Gina was coaching the women's team, of course. And We've uh, followed the progress of Gianna, how she's uh, made it very clear that UConn is her team. So under Cody's, Kobe's tutelage, over these next couple of years, maybe she can develop into a prospect for UConn. You never know. I mean, You never know. Gino could <laughs> use her next year, I think. <laughs> well, Gina likes probably when he hears the answer, like, yeah, I can beat my dad, who's you know one of the greatest players in NBA history. So that's good. You want a little bit of confidence. That checks one of the Gino boxes. Houston still up by one as Williams tried to get it, finally controls it. And now UConn gets an open look for Crystal Dangerfield. Second one for Dangerfield, halfway down and comes out. Crystal's now 0 for 2 from outside the three-point line. Three-point shooting has been the difference in this game so far. UConn has made one, Houston has made five. The number of would say, well, how was UConn down one after one? They shot 69% from the field. Here's Dangerfield, who will go in and lay it in for an easy two. And they held Houston to 36% shooting, but Houston made those three-pointers in the first quarter. Yeah, that's clearly the difference in the game right now, the three-point shot for Houston. Sellout crowd starts to make a little noise here in the second quarter as Connecticut's back in front. Fell down, a correction, Blackshell Fair fell down. And we'll go the other way. Yeah, I thought, I didn't think she initiated the contact with the right shoulder, right back. See, the other side, I don't think Samuelson committed a foul. Acting on both, both sides does help. But she initiated the contact with her shoulder and lowered it. Williams, Collier, Coombs, Samuelson, Dangerfield, the five on the floor for UConn. Samuelson turns. Can't hit. You can see Houston wants to run off the miss. Watch out fair. Three-pointer. Rebounded by Samuelson. Coombs had a hand in the face. Collier streaking down the middle for two. Nafisa in double figures with 10. She also has five rebounds. Quickly closing in on double-double number 18 this year and 42 for her career. Harris. Harris, Dangerfield read it, got after it, got on the floor, found Samuelson and Katie Lou for two. Great defense by Dangerfield. Timeout, Houston. The anticipation by Dangerfield. Changing the game from the defensive end to get UConn going offensively. The senior with two on the break. What does the future hold for?
we watch everyone. She has contributed so much to UConn in her four years here. And for more on what Nafisa Collier has done well, let's check in the Meg with Cobalt's Court Vision, brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. You know, it's the, it's the way she carries herself, but she runs the floor so well. Her hands are always up, always ready for the ball. And she, she finds a way to score against defenders that are often taller than her, but she gets herself into the right position, gets the defense on her back. You know, the up and under she has perfected. Look at the space she creates. The defense lunges at her. She wisely goes against that top foot. It, it's, she's so quick with the release. She can just score in so many different ways. She sees the floor so well. And great pass to her best friend and fellow senior. Numbers today for Collier, perfect from the field, five for five. She's 0 for two from the free throw line, 10 points and five rebounds. I went back through my notes to find some quotes from Gino Oriema about the two seniors. So freshman year, Gino on the FISA quote that stood out, she's too timid. And ah, you think about it, it's like, well, trying to find her role in a team that had Brianna Stewart on it. It's probably a little tough, but by the sophomore year, Gino had said, maybe one of the most unique players we've had here in a he while. He was on to something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's come to this. When you join a list that includes Lobo, Charles, Stewart, and more, you've done something right at UConn, Rebecca the Braves. There's one of them. Rebecca Lobo. Is she doing commentary while the game's going on? She doesn't have an off switch, does she? <laughs> She's just mom today. <laughs> Justine, what was going on in that UConn huddle? Eric, well, Gino Oriema was telling his team there's way too much standing around on offense. They're quitting after the first pass. He wants them to explore that second, third, fourth option, guys. Thank you, Justine. Could be a traveling violation. You know what Rebecca's doing? Gerard Guilfoyle just brought this up. I think it's right. She's rehearsing her speech. She's got a speech coming up at halftime. Oh no. Oh no. Oh boy. Watch out. Those are those are the, well, only one is coming down. Yeah, well, we hope it doesn't come all the way down. <laughs> let's have let's hope that goes a little smoother than Collier's did. A lot bigger than the Collier and Sanderson numbers as the FISA will go to the free throw line. They another, a couple. another terrific up and under move by Collier. Well the FISA, you know, when Gino said maybe one of the most unique players we had in a while, that was her first team All-American sophomore year where she averaged 20 points a game and she was the co-player of the year with Katie Lucinison 
in the American. Katie Lou, of course, her sophomore year, was the most outstanding player. The tournament had 40 points in the final, 10 threes against USF. Freshman year, Gino said about Katie Lou that she has an edge and a toughness. We need it to come out more. That's something that has happened throughout these four years, I think. And then after Brianna Stewart left, I think there were a lot of people, and you, you may remember this too, it's like, well, you know, Katie Lou Samuelson is the player most similar to Brianna Stewart's game. I, I mean, it's, we all know where Stewie is, but could take it inside, outside, had the size, but I think Gina was trying to stay out in front of that, and it's like, all we've asked Katie Lou to be, this is her sophomore year, be the best Lou you can be, that will be good enough for us. That's all you gotta be, it's all you can be. Speaking of which, Katie Lou can't get it. Callier kept it alive for Williams. That's what Williams needs to do. The freshman just offensive rebound, put back, play good defense. The offense will come. Five points for Kristen. Had six points and four assists in the win against Wichita State. Inside of five to play in the first half. Good feed inside and the finish by Alyssa Oconee. First points for Oconee, averaging seven points a game. Really good offense by Houston. Dangerfield held onto it. Gave it to Williams, who missed the mark. Got it out of the hands of Houston by Kristen Williams. Now Dangerfield hits the gas, finds Samuelson for two. Terrific pass from Crystal Dangerfield. Crystal just has that next gear. There's no cruise in her. I mean, she can cruise for a little bit, but once she kicks it into that next gear, no one can keep up with her, even when she's dribbling the basketball up the court. The sign of a really, a really talented, fast player is when they explode with the ball. It helped by Samuelson to be there defensively. It'll be UConn ball. She can just put it into overdrive and then perfectly timed bounce pass. They are dominating in the lane. Points of the paint brought to you by Ring Zen, the largest Benjamin Moore retailer in Connecticut. Big edge for UConn in the paint so far. They try to take it outside. Kristen Williams. Michaela Coombs got on the floor as well. Now Samuelson, and that one was a hard hit on Katie Lou. She's grabbing for her back right away. Right away, Katie Lou was down and grimacing, and athletic trainer Janelle Francisco quickly out onto the floor. And don't forget, she took a shot in the beginning of the game when she hit a screen that wasn't called out. Gene Oriam has come out as well. Katie Lou's father, John, and sister Carly watching. Well, one thing that is been very consistent for Katie Lou. She has taken tons of contact here as teams have tried to knock her off her spot, knock her off her game, and they've gotten very physical with her. Now she wants to get up. Gino has one hand. Janelle has the other. Now that she's up, let's watch it again. Hit right in the back. You can see grabbing for it right away. Well, the back is nothing to mess with. And you see the reaction immediately. She is walking gingerly past the bench, down to the end of the bench. So Megan Walker will come into the game for Samuelson, of course. We'll keep an eye on Katie Lou. Justine Ward will as well once we get any information. Pass it along. Chris Daly has moved down to talk to Samuelson as well. I mean, 10,000 plus sold out crowd Ooh. got silent. And a foul called on Megan Walker. I thought it was a good call. I mean, she used her hands and pushed her. First That's her first personal. Megan spent a lot of time on the bench. Violation Coombs. here. Yeah, Coombs stays in the game for UConn. Williams, Coombs, Walker, Dangerfield, Collier, the five on the floor. And a 
kick ball. Coombs, I think, fortunate that that ball was kicked because... Yeah, she got bailed out. I yeah. mean, that's... But you know what? The only way that Coombs gets that experience to read that play properly is through playing time. You can't get that... You can't get it in practice. It's got to be from the games as Samuelson walks off backstage to the training room and followed by the team doctors who are sitting behind the bench. There is a table back there, so she could be getting some treatment on the table. But as you saw, leaving the bench area. Inside of three to go, three on the shot clock. That's why Dangerfield had to take a three from deep. UConn on top by nine. They trailed by ten. In the first quarter, as Sarithia Hawkins lost the handle, and it'll be UConn basketball. Coming up, join Gary Applecare Walters for the first half highlights and analysis. You'll hear from Gino Oriema on his seniors on UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Report, brought to you by your local Ford stores. We will stay with you right at the end of the first half. That's when the Rebecca Lobo ceremony is going to start. Actually, halftime has been extended by seven minutes, Houston agreeing to that so they can have the Lobo retirement ceremony and Rebecca's making her way to be in position. You're going to get out there as well because her former teammates have all been invited back here to take part in it. You played with Rebecca for a year. He, he just said, I don't yell for my health. Yeah, I, I've heard his, his banter for quite a while. <laughs> But, you know, his frustration is, you know, you're not playing defensively, whether it's contesting shots, being aggressive. And that's the maturity that he has talked about throughout the course of the season. You have to treat every team the same, whether it's Baylor, Louisville, Notre Dame, and Houston. Well, Houston hungry, as we mentioned. They struggled against USF last time out. They lost by 10 at home, 59-49. That won't go down out of the timeout. The rebound for Houston. They were down 23 at home at halftime in that game. So they played hard here right from the opening tip against second-ranked UConn. It's too bad Dangerfield didn't get an assist on that previous offensive possession. It was an outstanding pass to Megan Walker. Hawkins. Good job by Kristen Williams, forced her into a tough shot, but Hawkins gets a second chance, and Branch finds Angela Harris for three. Harris now with eight points. That's the second three-pointer she's made. And Houston <laughs> hanging tough, down by six. What I love is she's shooting 23% from three-point range, and she's knocked two in. She struggled in the first meeting with UConn. She was 0 for 7 from outside the three-point line, but she's been good here today. Megan Walker picks up another foul. And Olivia Nelson, the Dota, will come in for Walker, who has two. It's a good call. Watch. She pushes her. And I will say, I mean, Hawkins was in her face, but that's not a horrible foul in terms of Walker because, you know, I think Gino Oriema would like to see a little toughness, a little grit. Well, Hawkins, making career start number 117 today, is going to know how to... Make sure something is noticed, something is called. There is Collier getting a hand on it with 1.29 to go before halftime. Into the backcourt for Angela Harris, junior from Cypress, Texas. Third team all conference last year. Big season a year ago for Houston, 20 wins, went to the WNIT. Shot clock down to four. And Michaela Coombs with the rebound. On the push, danger field, hesitation, the floater for two. What a beautiful basketball play. And then the near steal. Throw it out of bounds. Good UConn. job by UConn to pressure. Houston into a turnover, make it difficult for the Cougars, who have now turned it over 11 times. Got to keep Dangerfield involved offensively. She's making things happen. Five turnovers for Houston in the last four minutes. Williams 
Spun into a double team, and she will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple. She got fouled a couple different times in that particular possession. Branch picks up the personal. That's her third personal foul, so Dorian Branch Williams on the line. Leading the Two team in minutes runs. played. She's the leading scorer on the active roster at 10 points a game. She's in foul trouble. As Williams makes the first. Yeah, that third foul definitely come back and haunt Houston later. Barnes with two personals, Hill with two personals, McConey with two personals, and Branch now on the bench with three. Blackshell Fair couldn't get it, and Collier gets called for the foul. A little bit of a late whistle there, and the 10,000 here at Gamble will let you know it. Even Gino was screaming about that one. Hands up, see, almost a steal. Second personal That's a ticky tack call with the stuff that they've let go. And then even Collier's like, what? <laughs> that even made Chris Daly get up. Chris Daly saying that's, that's how they play in high school. Well, it's been a struggle at the free throw line for Houston. 63%, they're 11th in the league. They were 2 for 11 against USF. Oh, and a big mistake right in front of Not Gino. a mistake you want to make in front of him. That's a bad turnover. That's the stuff that makes him crazy. stopping play. I don't know if there was a little something between two players here that they want to kind of calm down a little bit. I don't think it's anything with the UConn bench. Gino's mad at his team, not at the officials. Looking at the clock, and they say it didn't stop on the out of bounds. All right, the officials yelling over here to broadcast area saying they're going to look at the clock. They're saying the clock didn't stop when the ball went out of bounds. All right, so they'll try to correct things here. So a reminder, Rebecca Lobo getting ready to go for the very first number to be retired in UConn history. The criteria is very clear. If you're elected to the Naismith Hall of Fame in Springfield, then you'll get your number retired. And Rebecca will Quite be the an first. honor. Yeah, it's an incredible honor, very well deserved. So Rebecca's number 50. We do expect to talk to Rebecca in the second half to see uh, how everything went. I know she's got some teammates here, including you in the building. And Gino Oriema and the UConn, the current team, they're going to stay here to be part of the ceremony as well. Again, extending halftime for this game. Now, the question may be, did the clock keep running after the whistle blew? I don't think there's going to be enough here, and this is something that at any level of basketball where they use replay drives you crazy, that's going to change what Houston's going to do right here. Maybe they put on two seconds, maybe they take off two seconds, who knows, but they're not going to put any, there's not going to be a shot clock, so they're just going to run their play with seven or eight seconds left to go on the game clock. So sometimes it's just be like, you know what, let's, let's so leave it be. 23. 22, 21, we're running. Officials have now lost the monitor, left the monitor. So 15.1 to go before halftime as Houston will put it into play. UConn was down by 10 early in this game. There's Harris. Back to Hawkins. Almost banked into three. Blackshell Fair, hot pass. Mm -hmm. Just enough time for UConn, three seconds, even though they got to go the length of the court. Now throwing the backcourt to Dangerfield. Throws it up. 
and off the backboard. She took a tumble. No foul there. Well, she well, took a tumble for sure, but she was fouled. Should be three free throws, and Gino's hot. He should be. Kobe Bryant's upset as well. Kobe's looked for contact a time or two in his day to get to the free throw <laughs> line <laughs> to get the job done. You know what? There wasn't a lot of contact see there. See too much. So we are at halftime. You can see the team staying on the court here at halftime to have a front row seat for the ceremony honoring Rebecca Lobo getting her number 50 retired here today at Gample Pavilion. One of the greats in UConn history will be the first to have her number retired as UConn with a big day here, senior day ceremony, and you can tell there's going to be a little mood lighting in this building here for the ceremony honoring Rebecca Lobo, national champion, and one of the greats in UConn history. Let's turn it over to John Tewitt. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the video boards as we begin a very special presentation. When you recruited me, you knew I belonged at UConn. You knew I was meant to play for you. And fortunately, I knew that too, and I followed my heart. And you have completely changed my life. And for that, I thank you. You have changed my life, and I am here tonight completely because of you. Thank you. I'm just sad that uh, I have to leave because I don't think there's any better place in the world to play basketball than right here. Husky fans, let's welcome back one of UConn's all-time greats, the program's first national player of the year the most outstanding player of the 1995 NCAA Final Four, and the person who was instrumental in UConn women's basketball, capturing the imagination of our state. Accompanied by our teammates, joining the Hall of Fame coach, Gino Oriema, and athletic director, David Benedict, on the floor from Southwick, Massachusetts, Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. Obviously, this is a special day for uh, not only for our seniors, but um, I think for UConn women's basketball. It's, um, it's, it's an opportunity for us to not only go back and remember some of the great moments that started UConn basketball to where it, it ultimately has become. <clears throat> And, you know, I watched that speech live when I was there, 
and I just watched it again, and it's, it's dawned on me more than once from that, from that night, and it's even more true um, this afternoon, that I want to just correct one thing that Rebecca said. I mean, she is right. She's there because of me. But what she, what she doesn't know, and that I know, and that everybody I know truly understands, um, I'm here because of you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so proud to recognize Rebecca with an honor reserved for Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame inductees. Number 50 will now be retired in perpetuity. Band, we need a drum roll, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, number 50, Forever in the Rafters. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've said many times that I was meant to wear that jersey. I was meant to play for Coach Oriema and Chris Daly. And I am forever grateful to them and to my teammates and to this university and to all of you fans for making this an experience of a lifetime for me. And these, these young ladies are having that experience now. And, you know it can be hard, but it is absolutely always worth it. Um, thank you to my family who is here, especially now that I'm a parent who watches my own kids play. I know the trauma that you went through every game, and I so appreciate it. And um, I know there are some kids here that I get to coach at the youth level, and I wanna make sure they know you can still wear number 50. Thank you everybody so much. Husky fans, one more time, number 50, Rebecca Lobo. This would be the time where I say, Megan, your thoughts on Rebecca Lobo, but as you can see, Megan has taken her spot Next to Rebecca Lobo. Let's check in with Justine to hear from Gino, presented by PC Richard and Son. Gino, how fitting is it that Rebecca Lobo is the first UConn player to have her number retired? Uh, uh, she was the first a lot of things, you know. Uh, you know. She was our first all, you know, like superstar, national player of the year type. Um, you know, it was first national championship. And um, more than anything, I think she was... The, the face of, of, uh, of UConn basketball to everyone in the country. And so, um, I think it's only fitting that she'd be the first. Got a little emotional. What does this day mean to you? Well, you don't have a chance a lot of times to um, to, to do this for people. Um, and this is a special, um, special day and it's a special moment for Rebecca and her family, and it's a special day for Connecticut basketball, and uh, and for me personally, you know, um, I've watched Rebecca grow up, and um, I still remember her as a 17-year-old, and uh, I've had a chance to, to know her for more than half of her life, so uh, I feel like I've grown up with her. Special bond. Back to the game at hand. Gino, do you have an update on Katie Lou Samuelson? Uh, apparently, they said something about she may have a back spasm. Um, I don't know that it's um, you know, it's it's serious or not. I haven't really talked to anybody over there. We'll find out when we get there. All right. Thank you, Gino. As he heads to the locker room, you caught up 40-30 from 
Harlem Gamble Pavilion as Rebecca Lobo's number officially retired. Gary and Kara, back after this. It is the UConn Women's Halftime Show. It's brought to you by our local Ford stores. Gary Apple back alongside Kara Walters inside Studio 31 here in New York City. UConn held Houston to seven points in that second quarter, uh, erasing a one-point first quarter deficit, and they lead it by 10 at the break. I want to get to that in just a moment. I know you would have loved to have been there for yeah. the halftime ceremony, the former uh, teammate that you were of Rebecca Lobo as you sat and watched. What was your, what was your feeling? I mean, it, first of all, to see Gino get emotional, yes. that rarely happens. So it was so nice. And for him to say, I'm here because of you, that, I, that was pretty amazing. But, you know, he's right. She's right. And it was, it was so great to play with her. I learned so much. She was such a mentor. So not only a teammate, but she brought me along, two years older than me. And she said, she used to say, I love when you came to Connecticut because I used to be the worst post player in America before you got here. And then you got the title and Gino started yelling at you. So, uh, not only a great teammate, but a wonderful human being. And we, we remain close friends. And now we play, our kids play against each other in AAU, which is, which is really fun to see. But not only a great teammate, wonderful person. And we all stay in touch and greatly uh, deserved. Can you, can you overstate the impact? that no. she had on the women's game? No, because it was at the time where it was up and coming and you were like, wow, we're getting all this attention. She's going on talk shows. This is so not only Connecticut, but she's done so much for women's basketball. That's what's so important about her. All right, so we're just getting going here on the Ford Halftime Show. When we come back, we're going to take a deeper look at the first half of today's game. And again, UConn leads it by 10 at the break. Katie Lou before going out, and Nafisa Collier combining for 23 of UConn's 40 first half points. We're back in a moment. UConn Basketball is brought to you by...
First half stats there presented by our local Ford stores. Connecticut did not shoot it very well from downtown, but overall they shot 54% in the first half. They erased a 10-point first quarter deficit to lead it by 10 at the break. When we come back, we're going to hear from Gino Orieva on his seniors, Kid Lou Samuelson and Nafisa Collier. Not just Rebecca being honored, but it is senior day in stores. We're coming right back. UConn Basketball is brought to you by your local Ford stores. For great deals on Ford trucks and SUVs, stop by your local Ford store or visit buyfordnow.com. thoughts on the careers of his seniors. Take a listen. These two have had amazing careers. And they won one national championship, which in most places puts you in their, you know, highest levels of their Hall of Fame. And here gets you a, geez, only one. (laughs) But that doesn't diminish one iota. You know, the amazing careers that they've had. It is amazing, right? I mean, the bar has been set so high at Connecticut, the one national championship, three final fours. They combined for 23 of UConn's 40 points in that first half. What did you see from the seniors? Well, again, consistency you saw from Nafisa Collier. She just, uh, she's a double-double machine. She's on her way there uh, today. So just, you know, she's cool, calm, and collected. I think Houston, give them credit. They came out strong, strong, sharp, shut strong start shooting the ball extremely well and Nafisa kind of stayed calm and did her thing and kept the the ship afloat and Katie Lou Samuelson unfortunately with that injury we'll see what happens we'll see if she comes back in the second half we're going to be back on the post game show second half action UConn and Houston coming following a short break
We're back here at Gamble Pavilion. This was the scene just a couple of moments ago. Katie Lou Samuelson was late to get onto the court, but she is on the court, and the fans were watching and holding their breath, Meg Como, because the rest of the team was out there for a couple of minutes. The word we get from Justine Ward, who talked with the athletic training staff for UConn, is it is back spasms. This is what we've watched for the last couple of minutes. A lot of twisting and twerking and bending for Katie Lewis. She tries to get loose and get ready for the second half of the 10-point game. Kind of like us when we get up every day, right? <laughs> At our ages. Yeah. yeah, she looks to try to, you know, as she's starting the second half, just trying to stay loose. But she definitely looks compromised, very tight. Senior day, not feel like a senior citizen day. <laughs> yeah, Dangerfield, Megan Walker. She tries a three. UConn is now one for 11 from outside the three point line, but getting on the glass had to have been one of the messages for Gino Oriyama. They were a minus six in rebounding margin in the first half against Houston. 12 point lead for the Huskies, who were down by 10 in the first quarter. Samuelson, maybe she's going to try to avoid some contact here. I can't blame her. Man. With the back, it's going to feel painful. And she is in a lot of pain as she's running down the court right now. Williams can't get it. Collier finishes up and will go to the free throw line. But during that run down the floor, I was looking right at Katie Lou, and she just had a pain look on her face the whole way down. Yeah, I mean, she's trying to power through, and, and it's, it's difficult. Nice steal there by Collier. Look at the body. Look at the work. What a savvy play by the freshman, Kristen Williams, to use her body to block the defense on that break. Missed the layup, but, Sam, uh, but Collier finished nicely. Got the foul. Converts both at the free throw line. The Fisa now with 14 points and eight rebounds. Samuelson will be coming out of the game shortly, I would think. It's difficult for her to run. And you talked about it right from the top running into screens and getting bounced around and that's two inside for Barnes. She's the first one to double figures now for Houston with 11. Danger field over the top and another trip to the free throw line for Collier. This is after the Collier free throw. Katie Lou, yeah, you can see that look. You can tell the back is seizing up a bit. I mean, you're kind of caught in the middle here, hoping that you keep moving, the blood starts flowing, maybe it loosens it up a little bit. You do know that if you stop, if you come out of the game, you're done. Exactly, yeah, because if you stop, it'll stiffen up even more. One shot. Sixteen points now for Collier. has moved into fifth place on the all-time scoring list. You got what a beautiful move, and Samuelson grabbing for that back right after committing the foul. Blackshell Fair has come in and played really solid minutes for Houston. That crossover to get by Samuelson, is it because it was just a great move, which it was, but at this point you have to say, and Nelson Adota looks to be checking in for Samuelson, at this point, you got to take her out. Oh, she didn't want. Yeah, she didn't want to look over. She knows, though. She knows. Like she's just that's top speed for her right now, and she heads to the bench. She'll sit down. We'll see if they maybe bring out a heating pad or something to. Yeah, you know, there, there is a heating pad that's been brought out now for Samuelson and. She'll head down to the end of the bench. Maybe she'll stay on her feet. At least try to stretch out. That's what she's trying to do. So we've got an eye on Katie Lou at the top of your screen. We've got an eye on what's going on with UConn. 
in a 12-point game. Williams floats in the air. Collier got after it. And last touched by UConn, and it will be Houston ball. A lot of action. It could have been a foul on Collier. Could have been a foul on Houston. That's what I mean when they let a lot of stuff go. I, I think it's good that they don't call all the fouls. So you can't. So how do things change now with the number two score on the team on the bench now for Connecticut? It's a great time for someone else to step up. Hawkins drains a three. Better defense though, because they took it away from Harris. Nelson and Dota running the floor, made the catch and was fouled. Hawkins picks up the foul. Second That's her second. Handful of Houston players with two. Barnes, Hawkins, Hill, four fouls on Branch. And Olivia at the free throw line. She's improved a lot at the stripe over these last few weeks. Not this time. Harris on the run. For two. Well, all the momentum right now with Houston. Lots of anxiety for Kinetic. It's a seven-point game. One of their best players is on the bench with a back injury. Megan Walker would be one of the players you would nominate for stepping up and trying to take control. We've seen her do that a couple of times this year. She'll go to the line. And, and that was a great play. I know it's got to please Gina Oriema. Dribble, penetrate, and get to the basket. Don't We've said this all season long, Eric. Don't settle for the first open shot that you find. Dribble, penetrate, and even better, get to the foul line. Megan Walker, 73% from the free throw line. She's third in the conference at 43% when it comes to shooting threes. 0 for 2 today. The team has struggled from outside the three-point line. 1 for 11. It's important for UConn to have a good defensive stop here. Try to stop some of Houston's momentum. But I've been impressed by Houston's offense and their composure. Nelson Adota and Megan Walker goes down. This will be a foul on Houston. Another foul on Houston as Oconee picks up her third personal. Walker seems to be okay. Good defense by Nelson Adota. It's hard to see what happened. But there was definitely contact away from the ball. So with 7.04 to go in the third quarter, Houston is over the foul limit. Five team fouls, so UConn shooting two free throws the rest of the way here in this quarter. Not a great stat for Ron Huey. <laughs> no, UConn 73% as a team. That's the number Megan Walker's at individually. UConn was 14 of 18 against Wichita in that win, 84-47 on Tuesday. Clinched their sixth regular season title in the American and their 26th conference title overall. And UConn could really change this game if they knock down these free throws. Huskies are 17 of 22 already from the free throw line here this afternoon. Hawkins open look. Nelson Adota got a hand in there, grabbed by Collier. They are all over the offensive glass, Houston. Back cut, Walker has to go back for it. Nice job by Walker to track that down. It was, a, it was a tough pass from Dangerfield. Williams to Collier. Collier can't get it, but she'll go back to the free throw line. That was Katie Lou Samuelson not on the bench. Fourth personal foul. The piece of Collier. Two shots. The training staff to get tended to with those back spasms. 
The one thing that has bothered Katie Lou has been injuries. And we talked about it, about how her freshman year she didn't play in the championship game because she suffered the broken foot in the national semifinal. Last year, she basically was playing on one leg for most of the season. She had a significant foot injury that needed surgery, foot and ankle injury, and she got surgery after the year was over. Really impacted what she was able to do as a junior. And she has been bounced around this year and taking a shot to the back in this game here today, the final regular season game at Gamble Pavilion. It's going to be a traveling violation. Turnover number 14 for Houston. UConn has turned it over just five times here today. Dangerfield, Collier, Williams, Nelson Dota, and Walker the five on the floor as Samuelson has made her way back to the UConn bench. Nelson Dota lost the handle and she gets called for the foul. That's a tough place to put the ball on the floor. Too much action in there. That's the third personal foul on the freshman. She'll stay out there. Samuelson anxious to get back in there, but... Yeah, you can see it on her face. Even she... an elite player like her, man, you know, you can just tell how restricted she is by the back injury. That's Shooting a great shot. Over Nelson Dodota is touching on a hill. Freshman. Seven different scores for Houston. They dress eight. With... Maya West out with a knee injury. They're shorthanded. Genius 3D mammography exam is a proud sponsor of the UConn women's basketball team. A more accurate mammogram, that's genius. Next free throw attempts come from Olivia Nelson Adota. This will be 25 and 26 of the game for UConn. She's over three today. Olivia had a good game against Wichita, career high six blocks in her 20 minutes to go along with eight points. It's her first point here this afternoon. UConn was down one after one. They outscored Houston 18-7 in the second quarter. They've outscored them 13-11 here in the slow-moving third quarter. Still over five minutes to go in the quarter. Into the hands of Dangerfield. Williams on her right. Walker calls for it in the paint for two. And a timeout called by Houston. Huskies have gone on top by 14 here in the third. Crystal Dangerfield knew all along where she was going. It was to Megan Walker. UConn stretched it out to a 14 point. Lead.
The lighting gallery, so much more than just a lighting store. By Masonic Care Residential Living Communities, visit MasonicCare.org. And by UConn Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Team Doctors for the UConn Huskies. A reminder that UConn athletic events are the perfect opportunity to entertain groups, including employees, clients, youth leagues, birthday parties, or a group of your closest friends. Visit UConnHuskies.com slash groups for more information on discounted group ticket pricing and benefits. And when you come to a game here at Gamble, you never know what you might see. You may see a freshman make a shot for $10,000. Asher. Asher. Boom! <laughs> Ten grand! The place went nuts! So did Asher. <laughs> Kobe loved it as well. So, my, my man Asher didn't know who to hug. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hug Kobe. <laughs> and ironically, UConn one of 11 from outside the three-point line, and Asher knocking it down from half court. So Yeah, they could use a little Asher. <laughs> Maybe the Asher magic is at work here. Give me someone to hug. This is the Valvano right there. Who am I hugging? Who am not, I going to get? Not I, him, yeah, I'm apparently. grabbing you. I don't know who you are. <laughs> Chris Kelly was right there on camera. Couldn't grab CK. <laughs> that was great. So timeout called by Houston, 4.51 to go in the third quarter. Been a bit of a rock fight here. UConn is on top by 14. Houston has been called for 17 fouls. They have two players with four fouls each, Branch and Oconee. Mentioned that they're only dressing eight. You can see Katie Lou Samuelson with the heating pad on her back. She has had that continuous motion going on trying to keep things loose. The officials are at the monitor. I think they're clarifying to see who a foul should have been called on. It could be Houston asking for a clarification here because they have two players with four fouls each right now. Yeah, we talked about that in the first half, that fouls could come back to haunt them later in the game. Crystal Dangerfield, six assists for Connecticut, go along with eight points. The piece of Collier has eight points and nine rebounds to go along with three assists. Katie Lou Samuelson left the game with 11 points and a couple of rebounds. Collier on senior day, five of five from the field. Good to see a little bit of a smile from Katie Lou there for a moment. Officials ready to play here. I think they were coming to give Megan an explanation, and they just said, let's play on. So. No, they blew me off. <laughs> and that was after Please I told Louise at halftime. He was right. It wasn't a foul. So much for the love. Off the foot of Walker, picked up by Dangerfield. Dangerfield chased from behind. Good hustle play by Angela Harris to break it up and knock it out of bounds. That'll get us to our five-minute media time. Now it comes with 4.30 to go in the third quarter. And the Huskies on top by 14. Not again.
and they've had amazing careers. And they've lost two games in the regular season. Four overall in four years. I say this all the time, people lose more games in a week than these guys have lost in four years. So they've had an amazing career. New episode of the Gino Oriema Show presented by UConn Health is after the postgame show today on SNY. And this is up to date. It is fitting that they are next to each other when it comes to the all-time scoring list in UConn history as Nafisa has moved into solo fifth here today. Huskies of honor as well. All Americans to get that designation. And I mean, Gino's right. You can look at all those points. You can look at what they've done. But their record right now is 136 wins and four losses. That's ridiculous. Coming into today. So Katie Lou, who took a shot to the back with about four minutes to go in the second quarter That's played two minutes here in the third quarter and a foul called on UConn out of the timeout. Uh, Nelson Adona gets the personal. personal That's her fourth. That's huge. And interesting Patuli Kamara coming in to replace her. Out of bounds by Kyle. They said I thought that was last touch by Houston. Not much of a fight for Nafisa. So here comes Batuli Kamara and in for Nelson Adota. Goes to the bench with four personal fouls. Batuli has played in 20 games this year, averaging four minutes a game. Now she will mix it up and get physical in her limited time. And we I have think seen that. that's why she went into the game. I think physically she matches up with Houston's bigs better than than perhaps Kyla Irwin. And this game is physical. Harris, 4-3. Angela Harris now with 13 points. What I love about Houston, they came into this game believing. And that's because of their coach, Ron Huey. Williams can't get it on the drive and a rebound for Houston. And out to Harris, Dangerfield back defensively. Great strip by Dangerfield. See, I thought that went off Harris. But what a great play. Great quick hands by Dangerfield. Oh, no, that's a good call. I thought it went off of her leg. Lawrence can't hit the three. Tipped into the hands of Houston. Red jerseys always there for the offensive rebound. And then the open three. This time, Megan Walker controls it. The guards are going to have to come down and rebound the ball more on the defensive end. Dangerfield, a quick entry. The kick out. Williams can't get to three. And the piece of Collier fighting for the rebound. A tie up and possession arrow. Give it to Houston. UConn cold for three point range. But to me, you've got to get Collier more touches on offense. At the moment, UConn is not a threat from outside the three-point line, so Houston will continue to pack it in and try to deny the go-to score for UConn with Sanderson on the bench. And a traveling violation, turnover number 16 for Houston. That's a gift for UConn. They would like to capitalize and score on the other end. Houston with a lot to play for right now, fourth place. But coming off that loss to USF, they need a win or a USF loss. Collier can't hit three, last touch by UConn, it's Houston ball. And that shot is what you and I have talked about at nauseum this year, that they they get, they get they end up taking the first open shot in the offense, and it's not necessarily the right shot. Houston with a win or a USF loss in these final two regular season games would earn the number four seed in the American tournament, which is key, that gets you a first round bye. Well, that's what Houston's got on the line here as they take on UConn today, and they host UCF on Monday. Dangerfield bounces it into Collier. Beautiful two-person game, and Collier with a chance for a three-point play. Got to get Collier involved in the offense. Dangerfield so dangerous in the open floor. Good work again by Collier to 
bury her defender Lafisa behind her in that low one, post. Lavisa with 21 after the free throw. <laughs> Connecticut brings it back to a 14-point lead. That matches their largest of the afternoon. Two minutes to go in the third. Good help by Collier. Collier now defending Hawkins. On the run, and a foul called on UConn. UConn foul, number 13, Kristen, Kristen Williams. Williams picks up the personal. That's her first personal. First time Williams, fourth on the team. Nice help by Collier, but good movement without the basketball by Hawkins. And the foul was committed. Barnes at the free throw line. Could not connect down the first in her second year with the Cougars after transferring in from Hines Community College. And again, foul shooting really a struggle here for Houston for the second consecutive game. They're four of eight from the free throw line after going two for 11 against USF. They missed their first seven free throw attempts against the Bulls last time out. UConn out of sorts offensively right now. So Dangerfield will try to do it herself. That was one of those shots that a player who is feeling it will take. Now if it doesn't go in, it's a different story with the reaction from the coaching staff, but UConn needed that bucket. Blocked cleanly by Collier. Great awareness, great footwork. Wild spinning shot by Barnes, rebound for Connecticut, and now UConn, little transition as Dangerfield pushes. Again, looking for Collier. Walker lost the handle, got it back. It's a wide open Collier. And it's another missed three. Ice cold from one, long range. One for 14 from outside the three point line. Katie Lou Samuelson still twisting on that bench, out with back spasms. Just so disappointing, you can see, you can see the look on her face. Collier kept it alive. Williams rips it away, has Dangerfield up ahead, and Crystal finishes. Credit Kristen Williams for the hustle. The same to Dangerfield. And Dangerfield's called for a foul near midcourt. 15 seconds to go in the half. Nice hustle. And then Dangerfield wisely off to the races. Fifth team foul on UConn, so two free throws for Houston. Now he's upset about that call. That, that foul call on Dangerfield is similar to the no call at the end of the first half against Houston when Dangerfield Shot that long three as time expired. Harris at the free throw line to shoot a couple. So she's running back. Let's see, does she hit her? That was incidental contact. I don't think it was anything bad, but he sh she did hit her with the arm. And the player went down. It's just the inconsistency of the way the game is called, which is a frustrating thing to the players. Collier, danger field, five seconds to go. Crystal lost the handle, two seconds, one from half court. Well, it went in for Asher, doesn't go in for Houston from half court. UConn stretches their lead out to 17. And when we come back, we'll talk with Rebecca Lobo. Here she comes, back in a moment.
scenes from the halftime ceremony here, honoring number 50, Rebecca Lobo. Her number retired here. Rebecca, so gracious to join us here courtside here today because I know they're pulling you in every direction. Well, I couldn't say no after you cleaned the headset for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned about you always. Congratulations, I'm watching that, and I think Gino was a little emotional. Were you emotional? You're always with a smile, but what was the feeling for you out there, Rebecca? Uh, th this one, this one's really, really special, just because I didn't think they were ever going to retire anybody's number, because you, know, you wouldn't have any numbers left because of all the great players who, who can continue to come here and play, and um, this one really means a lot. And, and also, Meg, you can relate to this, because when your kids are old enough to understand something and to be there and to experience and remember it, um, it's just, it's pretty awesome. Well, Eric, you mentioned Gino being emotional. Uh, were you surprised that Gino got a little emotional as he spoke? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, especially the last year and a half with the stuff with the Hall of Fame and everything. Like, you know, I've reflected a lot more than I ever had in, 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 in the past. And I, I just so appreciate everything he has done for me in my life. Um, but he does that for every player who comes through here. He's had that kind of impact on so many people. So he's like the one who's had that impact on me, but then he's had all these players that he's had an impact on. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that my timing was the way it was and could be one of the, the earlier people for him. When you first came as a recruit to UConn, who was it that took you under her wing and showed you everything around here and really sold UConn on you? Well, you all know the answer to that. That was Megan. I remember meeting Megan. Um, as the game's starting here, but uh, meeting Megan my junior year when I was being recruited after a game here in Gamble and going back to the locker room and meeting the players and just being like, man, I fit in here. <laughs> <laughs> these people, these people have as warped a sense of humor as I do. And, That's uh, the key. And, you know, last 25 years have uh, been, been pretty great since those moments. Well, you made a tough decision. Your folks weren't thrilled with the idea as Collier misses that jumper. But you made it. You made a choice to come here, which wasn't popular at the time. Well, you know, my parents were educators in Connecticut. There, you and I are, Megan, yeah. wearing our matching you pants. Matching, for the colors. Clearly, really and uh, and my my parents saw UConn as a safety school, which a lot of people at that time did. And and now um, it's not that anymore. It's it's an amazing institution with a great academic reputation. And um, you know, I think our '95 team had a part in that. Turnover for Houston as. UConn on top by 17. Yes, she was trying to pass it, and then all of a sudden Angela Harris tried to put it in her back pocket, and that's <laughs> Carrie Ann to travel, and Ron Huey in the background. It's like, we, we've turned the ball over enough here today. You know what, though, is one of my favorite moves that you see players in college and high school too do? They screw up, and then they yell at their teammate. Like, <laughs> Megan, you're in my day, you would say my bad, and these days you say, you're bad. I, I'm just carried, but that's your bad. <laughs> Alia <laughs> tried to drop it down for Kamara. She was fouling the pass. Well, I, I, you must be touched that Kobe would come here for your ceremony. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? That's what somebody said to me. Oh, I didn't know you and Kobe were friends. How great was it? This is what I'm watching in the pregame ceremony as Katie the Samuelson's walking out for senior night. And right in front of me, Kobe Bryant's got his phone and he's recording that moment because that moment is meaningful to him and his daughter because Katie Lou is her favorite player. I mean, how the tables have turned. You know, this icon of the NBA is here because of a women's basketball player. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Good fight by Batuli Kamara, and she'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple of courts. If you're just joining us, Katie Lou Samuelson uh, took a shot to the back in the first half, back spasms of the report, tried to play two minutes in the second half. So Batuli Kamara is out there because second Olivia Nelson Dota's got four foul. personal fouls, and Batuli was only Kamara playing four two. minutes a game in there and fighting. I have to ask you, because you see UConn a ton in your work at ESPN, what Nafisa Collier and Katie Lou Samuelson what they've meant to this program, but also how valuable they are to this year's UConn team if they're going to make a run in what is a very crowded, competitive field for a national championship this year. Yeah, so much has got to be on their shoulders along with Crystal Dangerfield. As important as the other pieces are, those three are going to be the ones who have to carry the load, and that's why, you know, nice finish by Collier. Oh, yeah. you know, that's why there's the concern with Katie Lou Samuelson being on the bench. They cannot afford any kind of sustained injury to either of those three players. Yeah, I mean, all year we've said the margin for error is so small, and then there's that factor of injury, and should that happen to, to anyone, particularly a key player, it is a game changer. And I just feel bad for Samuelson in such a big game. Her dad flew in, her sister surprised her and flew in. Kobe's here to watch her. Kobe and his daughter are here. And for her to sustain that injury, uh, just you know, diving on a loose ball, a great hustle play. 
It's going to be a foul called on Megan Walker. So Walker now with three personal fouls. Here's the assist for Batuli Kamara. What a pass. That's some repetition in practice. They love it, though. Anytime the post player, because, you know, Megan, anytime yeah. the post player catches the ball, they're looking for their post partner. Beautiful high-low pass. And what we've seen through the four years, if Nafisa Collier gets it anywhere in the post, it's, it's usually going in. I mean, it's it's over by that point. Here's Batuli continuing to fight in her time off the bench. And they needed her to come in because Houston has done an outstanding job crashing the offensive boards. Kamara's physical presence in there on the defensive end has changed the game for UConn. Kristen Williams. Turnaround by Collier is off the mark and a rebound for Harris. The feed and Collier comes back and gets called for the foul. Well, where is UConn's place in the national picture, Rebecca? Because you know there's 10,000 people in here. A bunch are going to go to the Final Four, and they can always count on UConn going to the Final Four every year. So they've made their plans for Tampa. Yeah, I mean, that's where's the, their spot? That's the most interesting thing about the college landscape this year is it's not one team and then everybody else. I think right now you're looking at six teams. That seems to be the consensus that people really feel can win a national championship. And, you know, so UConn's right in the mix, of course. Baylor's up there. Oregon, uh, Mississippi State is one. Uh, you know, it's, it's a year, Notre Dame, of course. It, it's a year where... Um, there's a lot more intrigue and, and drama than there has been in past years in terms of favorites going going into the tournament. Well, and it goes back to where they're going to, you know, where they get seated, who's in their bracket, and you know, you need a little luck. And if they stay healthy, and don't have key foul trouble, then they have a chance. Yeah. Kristen Williams. Nice look. The B2 Collier four two. And they're playing really. In the last week or two, they've been playing really good basketball. Well, Nelson Udoto coming off the bench, as well as Michaela Coombs, changes his team. Yep. Great steal by Collier to feed to Dangerfield, who will go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Great read by the freshman. Collier got the steal. Tried to get the assist. There'll be a couple of free throws for outstanding free throw shooter Crystal Dangerfield. And Eric, you bring up, you know, the teams that can win a national championship, and there's more than we've seen in the past. It's the same thing with National Player of the Year conversation. Last year, everyone knew it was going to be Asia Jones. And, you know, we've had years where everyone knew it was going to be Brianna Stewart. Hang on one second. Asia Wilson. I know I'm when you're I'm here. I'm sorry, Asia Campbell. Wilson. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I understand. I no, no, you. thank you for that. Thank you for that. Asia Wilson, yeah, it would have been years ago where it was Asia Jones. Yes. And, uh, but this year, again, you've got a, a group of players, and Nafisa Collier being one of them, who could win a, a National Player of the Year award. I know Gino's been Nafisa's campaign manager for a month and a half, two Even though he now. claims he's not. I know, but the way she's played, you know, the last player to average 20 and 10 was you. I mean, it hasn't happened. Well, then happened give it to her right now. <laughs> That's right. You're gonna, you're gonna, we're going to call that a Lobo, averaging 20 and 10. There's Collier inside for two more. That play started with a great block on the other end by Petuli Kamara. A piece up to 27 to go with their nine rebounds. Well, and Rebecca, we were talking about this in the beginning of the telecast. You know, the, the key, if you take Collier away from this team, they are, they're not even close to the team they are with her. Nafisa gets called for the foul. Here's Petuli on defense. We talked about her coming in and changing the game here in the fourth quarter. Great block on the defensive end. Perfect pass from Dangerfield to Collier for two. That's the fourth personal foul on Nafisa, so Nelson Adota at the scores table. She's got four fouls. She will come in for Collier. She'll be back, but the crowd's going to take every opportunity they can to pay tribute to one of the seniors. We'll take a seat next to Samuelson as Branch delivers. All right, we don't have much time left with you here. Where does this rank for you? You see your number, the first ever to be retired here. You won a national championship. You accomplished so much as a player, as a contributor. You're in the Hall of Fame. You're the co-host of the Ball and Chain podcast starring Steve <laughs> Russian. I mean, where does this rank for you, Rebecca, to see that number 50 up there? You know, it's separate from anything that was a team accomplishment, you know, a national championship or sure. whatever, but as far as the individual stuff goes, it, it's, you know, holding hands right with the Hall of Fame induction. I mean, this is this is where everything happened for me in my in my career. The, and um, 
it it means a ton for that to be up there right now. And knowing the numbers that are going to be next to you in the years to come, because you're There's just gonna be a lot first. of them. It's going, yeah. to, it's going to be a steady parade up there. Well, first of all, Sue Bird has to decide to retire. <laughs> she and Diana both. I mean, it That's might be true. 10 years be, uh, before they decide to retire and, and then have to wait their five years to get into the Hall of Fame. Kristen Williams works with Kamara. And the entry pass doesn't get there to Nelson Adota. Well, the two top scores for UConn on the bench right now with Collier and Samuelson. So it's going to look a little rough offensively for UConn. Walker grabs it, and now Crystal Dangerfield will slow things down. And Eric, my real hope is that uh, the sweater that Gina wore against Oklahoma gets retired. Oh, it right never next comes to my out jersey. of the closet, right? Let's retire that thing right now. He got a he got a flurry of texts that night. Take that thing off. <laughs> I think Gina would trade that for having black bunting come off of uh, Huskies of Honors. Cleveland. Yours bit. was good. Yeah, Mine was, was good. well done. Yeah, they, they need to work he, on that. He was going to lose his mind. <laughs> I mean, it's not a surprise. You've got why why of do practice. you have to? No, but why do you have to have it covered in the first place? Oh, I see. The, the surprise try. was CD. CD was a surprise. Right. Well, if it's not a surprise, just, you know, forget the the black cloth that doesn't Something work Something tells well. me after tonight there will be no more <laughs> yeah, black yeah. cloths. <laughs> when I saw a guy balancing on a ladder like a circus performer to get it off there, I figured that's the last time we're going to do that. It made for good TV, though. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> Inside of four minutes to go. UConn. Grinding it out here. Now comfortably in front, Dangerfield will add to it in the quarter three. Spectacular game for Crystal Dangerfield. 19 points, eight assists. Watch out there with two more. Williams across with 3.20 to go. Collier will come back into the game. Kamara, well, she's done everything so far. Why not try a baseline jumper? Nelson and Dota, the putback. Now, that'll be one of the interesting things here in the postseason. How much will Olivia Nelson and Dota and Michaela Coombs, who have both played a lot for UConn lately, when games are tight in the third and fourth round of the NCAA tournament, will they be in the regular rotation for UConn? Nelson will go to her, you would imagine. She completely changed the complexion of that third quarter in their South Carolina Without game defensively. Right. And, and, you know, Coombs will come in and, and spell the guards, particularly Dangerfield, play good defense, set screens, make the right pass. She works on D. Her athleticism, yeah, get offensive rebounds. Williams tries to return it to Nelson and Dota. Kamara, oh, she's done a great job. She's earning herself some more <laughs> minutes down the road with the way she's playing today. Foul trouble for Nelson Adota. Samuelson on the bench with an injury. Foul trouble for Collier. And Batuli Kamara has delivered. Nelson Adota's got the rebound. Fifth rebound for the freshman. Crystal Dangerfield across half court inside of two minutes to go. UConn's trying to empty the bench here with Bent and Coombs and Irwin waiting to get in. The clock's been running. Dangerfield. You know, the good thing about this is it just gives us more time to sit next to the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. But now we say goodbye, Rebecca. Congratulations. Hope it was a great day for you and your family because it was a great ceremony. Thank you so much, guys. Great to see you. Rebecca Lobo will be back to wrap things up here. You got on top big here in quarter number four. What is the future?
Senior Day game. Plus, you'll hear Gino Oriyama's post-game press conference on the UConn Women's Basketball post-game show presented by People's United Bank. Our game reset is presented by Town Fair Tire. Nafisa Collier with 27 points and 9 rebounds. She's 9 of 13 from the field. UConn has struggled from outside the three-point line. Katie Lou Samuelson limited today due to a back injury playing 18 minutes here on Senior Day. And our drive of the game is presented by Nissan, and it's courtesy of Crystal Dangerfield. Well, it all starts on the defensive end for UConn. So much of their offense comes from their defense. Tremendous anticipation by Dangerfield. Julie Kamara gave some good minutes here. Two points, four rebounds, two blocks in her 12 and a half minutes on the floor. As Nafisa Collier's back out there with Kyla Irwin and Molly Bent and Michaela Coombs and Olivia Nelson Adota. Inside of 90 seconds to go, UConn has outscored Houston 41 to 25 here in the second half. Houston still shooting. Octavia Barnes now with 14. Houston has locked up a top four seed in the tournament. USF lost to Cincinnati, so Houston, even with a loss here today, gets a first round bye at Mohegan Sun coming up on Friday. If they shoot like this, they are going to be a very difficult team to contend with. Lisa Collier now at 29. They're physical, they crash the boards. Ron Huey has done a great job turning around this program. Another three. Dorian Branch now with 14. And now Tuli Kamara in for Nafisa Collier. Side of 30 seconds to go, and that's going to be it for Olivia Nelson and Dota. That'll be her fifth. A little too aggressive with that screen. That is the fifth foul. Olivia Nelson. Okay, Megan Walker back into the game as Olivia fouls out. She's the first UConn player to foul out of the game this year. It's incredible. You would think it would have happened more often, but they do a good job of not committing senseless fouls. Got the rebound, shot clock is off, and Michaela Coombs will dribble it across half court. And the sellout crowd that remains here at Gamble, they come to their feet to salute UConn, another win for the Huskies. But this win comes on senior day, 83-61 the final. Ball game, final score, UConn 83, 63-61. Katie Lou Samuelson couldn't play in the second half, but just a couple of minutes. That will be a big story going forward. UConn on the road at USF on Monday before beginning play in the American Tournament at Mohegan Sun on Saturday. And you can tell how emotional Katie Lou is here. Yeah, you feel bad for the kid. It's a big day. And uh, to not be able to play, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking. Kristen Williams to try to cheer up the teammate. Now the team's going to stay on the floor here because while they were on the road, they captured the regular season title in the American Athletic Conference. So instead of doing it on the road, they're going to pass out the t-shirts here in the building here today and at the presentation of the championship trophy. Something that should not be dismissed. I know you can look at it and say, well, UConn is now 101-0 in the regular season against American opponents and 116-0 overall. But winning a regular season title is one of the goals that the coaches put on the board at the start of the season. And that they, take, they take great pride in winning the regular season. Day in and day out, week in after week out.
It's hard work. So they are six for six when it comes to winning the American regular season title. Five for five when they get to the tournament. They'll go for a sixth tournament title coming up this coming weekend at Mohegan Sun. They'll be the number one seed in the tournament coming up this weekend in Uncasville. And these seniors now 137 and four all time. They do expect to come back here to play a couple more games. That's the hope at least as UConn will host first and second round games here at Gamble Pavilion. Assuming all goes well against USF and in the American tournament. So smiling here, that photo will end up in the office wall <laughs> across Along the street. Along with the many others. Yes. And the Fisa Collier will get it up into the air for one more photo. And I don't know if Katie Lou's going to feel up to it, but the seniors are about ready to address the crowd here at Gamble Pavilion. We'll see if just. Nafisa takes the mic here to say thanks. Hey, everybody. I just want to say thank you to all the fans. Um, we have the best fans in the country, and you guys have made playing here some of the best four years of my life. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, to kind of piggyback off what B said, um, we appreciate everything you guys have done for us these four years. It's been a roller coaster. Um, I'm really happy with everything. You know, I'm bummed with the, how today went out for me, but I'm so glad how our team fought, and I'm so glad that you guys were here to witness it. You guys are really great. One final hug for the seniors as the teammates get together at center court. Katie Lou wasn't in pain. Maybe she'd go for the mic drop, but I think she's just like, you know I don't what? think she expected these need, kind of tears I, today. I need to go get some treatment right now. So Katie Lou and UConn with a win here today. Let's hear from Gino with Justine. Gino, Katie Lou tried to go back out there for the second half. What can you say about Katie Lou and the player that she is? Well, it's unfortunate, you know, that she didn't get a chance to, you know, to play all night. Um, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, we weren't going to take take any risks, you know, going forward either, you know, for our team or for her personally, you know. Um, she thought she could give it a shot in the second half, and then you could see after a couple possessions that it wasn't, you know, there's no point to it. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens from here on in. But, uh, I mean, you saw how important those two guys are to our team, and it was uh, uh, it was a tough it was a tough day all the way around. An emotional day, a challenging game. How was your team able to put this one away without one of your top two scorers on well, the floor? You know, that's that's what if you ever want to be a really good team, that's what eventually that's what you have to do. You know, you can't say, well, we're going to be at full strength all the time. Nobody's going to be in foul trouble. So we had to do, deal with all that today, and uh, at the same time. You know, we had some players step up and, and really help us a lot. You know, um, uh, you know, Olivia, in spite of the fouls, helped us defensively. And Tully came in and did a great job to help us. Um, you know, that that's what you're going to need. You know, everybody's going to have to contribute. And, um, you know, we're going to see more games like this, not less. So it was good for us. Another contributor, senior Nafisa Collier, 29 points, nine rebounds. What has she brought to this program? Uh, you know, I, I've said it before, you know, the, the, the numbers, anybody can look at the numbers, but you have to be here every day and you have to see her work every day. You have to see her at practice every day and the way she trains and the way she prepares. And, and it's, it's no surprise whatsoever that she's able to do what she does because uh, um, no one works harder. No one's more committed. Um, I couldn't be happier for anybody. Gino, thank you. Thanks for everything this season on SNY. Oh, thanks, thanks SNY for bringing UConn women's basketball to, to the whole country. Appreciate it. Eric? 
and bringing it to him on the couch while he was there recuperating for a couple of days. Where was that, Gino? <laughs> Kobe stays to the very end. Rebecca Lobo staying as well. And Gino walks off after a win. And today's people, People's United Bank player of the game is Nafisa Collier. Well, Gino said all you can about Nafisa, what she means to the program. Here are the numbers from senior day. 29 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals, had a block shot, was 10 of 14 from the field. Katie Lou Samuelson's time cut short today with a back problem. She had 11 points. And Justine is standing by with the seniors. Justine. Thank you guys here with Katie Lou Samuelson and Nafisa Collier. And Katie Lou, I think we have to start with you. We know you tried to go back out there in the second half. How are you feeling? Um, you know, I'm sore. Um, tried to go out there for the team, but it was better off, you know, resting. They took care of business, so it was fine. An emotional day for both of you. Nafisa, what did today mean to you? Um, I was really, you know, happy for today. I think this is a celebration and a mile marker for us because um, just the fact that we've been here for so long, even though it feels like it's slowing by, um, we've accomplished a lot and we work really hard to get where we're at right now. Katie Lou, we'll start with you on this question. What does it mean to you to play for UConn? Um, it means everything, you know. Being recruited and committing here, it was just, you know, you don't know what to expect. And then when you kind of go through it, you go through all the ups and downs and then you really... Um, just look back and see what we've been able to do, see the stuff we've been able to accomplish, and we didn't even think we could do it. And so it means everything being here. All right, Nafisa, same question for you. What is playing at UConn mean to you? Yeah, definitely everything Lou said. And seeing Rebecca here, it just really solidifies for, for so many, I mean, decades, really. They've been, uh, been able to accomplish so many amazing things. And you see the players that come back. You see that, you know, the coaches make connections. The players make connections. Her team was here. Um, so the relationships you forge here, um, it's just as good as, you know, how good of a player you become. You talked about the relationships. You guys have now both finished in the top five in the all-time scoring list. How much is that the bow on this whole UConn experience for you guys? I mean, it's awesome. It's something that, you know, we probably would have never imagined as freshmen. And um, being able to do that and being able to come out the way we've been able to, um, I think, you know, it's it's really cool to just be mentioned in the names we're mentioned with. But to have it with someone that's in your same class, it's pretty amazing. And Nafisa, what has it been like playing for Gino, and what's the relationship that you've built with him? Mm -hmm. um, it's been pretty amazing. We've, I mean, everyone with him has had their highs and lows throughout the years. But, I mean, even, you know, when we come back for the summers to have our team meetings, it's we're still kind of in awe even after, you know, three or four years. And he's such an amazing coach, and sometimes you kind of have to step back and think, wow, like he's been able to accomplish so much, and where you get to the opportunity to play for him now. So it's really amazing. What about you, Katie Lou, your relationship with Gino? And maybe one thing, if you had to pick one thing that you'll take away that you've learned from him. Um, I mean, I think just the biggest thing is never being satisfied with where you're at and knowing that there's always something you can improve on, always something you can get better at. And it's easy to just go practice the things you're good at. But when it comes down to it, when you, when you practice things you're bad at, that's what makes you a better player. All right, guys, so you have one more regular season game. You then have the postseason. How much is it on your mind that you have some unfinished business to take care of once you get to March Madness? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's kind of been what we've trying to been used to fuel us this whole year. Is, and that's why, you know, when we don't have our best games, it's disappointing because we know that we have to prepare um, for every game the same, and sometimes, you know, we don't end up doing that. So that's been, you know, our goal from the beginning. Thank you, Nufisa. Thank you, Katie Lou. A senior duel we will not soon forget. Eric? Justine, thank you. As good to see Katie Lou walking off the court with a smile as UConn wins it here on Senior Day, 83-61. Back to wrap it up before we get you to Gary and Kara with the post-game show. Nafisa, yes, over the top with that trophy.
Captain Brew Ascent featuring all-wheel drive. Love is now bigger than ever this winter. By Trantolo and Trantolo, Connecticut's personal injury law firm. Let our family help your family. By Rings End, the largest Benjamin Moore retailer in Connecticut. Our initials are RE, as in refresh your home. And by the Connecticut State Farm agents of the game, Mike Esposito and Christian Edgar in Manchester. Speak with them today. Updating the total for the senior tandem after their senior day performance. 40 points combined for Katie Lou and Nafisa today. One more regular season game to go at USF before it's on to postseason play. This is our SNY finale. Thank you so much to our crew, Gerard Guilfoyle, John DeMarsico, Tom Rockland, Eddie Warm, and all the people behind the scenes who bring you UConn Women's Hoop on SNY. And it's another win on SNY. We're perfect after seven years, 83-61, the final. Stay with us after the postgame show, all new episode of the Gino Oriema Show. So for the final time, for Meg Como, Justine Ward, and our entire SNY crew, I am Eric Free. It is time now for People's United Bank Post Game Live with Gary Apple and Carol Walters. All right, Eric, we.